Insurance companies are increasingly abandoning all levels of football over the cost of concussion litigation, which is a problem that one executive for the upstart XFL described as an existential question. According to a report by ESPN's Outside the Lines, the NFL currently has no general liability insurance to cover the increasing cost of concussion litigation, and only one insurance company is offering any workers' compensation coverage for NFL teams. The NFL declined to comment on the ESPN story. Neither the league nor the NFL Players Association have yet to respond to the Daily Mail's request for comment. In 2014, the NFL agreed to a $1 billion concussion settlement with former players. Individual and class action lawsuits have been brought against the NCAA and youth football organizations, such as Pop Warner. Currently thousands of former college football players are involved in a class action lawsuit against the NCAA. ESPN reported that lawsuits have been filed in at least 29 states, centering on concussion-related issues across 18 different sports and activities at both the professional and amateur levels. According to ESPN, helmet manufacturers face similar problems. Pop Warner Little Scholars, which reportedly covers 225,000 youth players was recently forced to switch carriers after a subsidiary of AIG refused to grant coverage without a neurological injury waiver. People say football will never go away, but if we can't get insurance, it will, Pop Warner executive director John Butler reportedly told colleagues after learning that only a single carrier was willing to provide head trauma coverage, according to ESPN. Share this article. Share. Pop Warner's medical director Dr. Julian Bales, a member of the NFL's head, neck, and spine committee, told ESPN that insurance coverage is arguably the biggest threat to the sport. Tackle football was already facing existential problems related to concussions without the issue of insurance hanging over the sport. In 2016, the NFL Executive Vice President of Health and Safety Initiatives Jeff Miller acknowledged the link between football and the degenerative brain disease chronic traumatic encephalopathy in remarks to a congressional committee. Although the remark could expose the league and its insurers in future concussion litigation, Miller's statement has been disputed both inside and outside the sport. We don't know why people get CTE, Dr. Aaron Manning, a neurologist at the Hospital for Special Surgery in New York, told DailyMail.com. I think the most that it's been looked at is in football players, but all that we know is what the brain looks like after they die. We don't know what happens during people's lives. We also don't know how the findings correlate with people's symptoms. In 2017, Boston University's CTE Center released a study that posthumously diagnosed 110 out of 111 former NFL players with CTE. Since then, CTE has remained in the news partly due to fallout from the suicide of former Patriots tight end Aaron Hernandez, who was found to have stage 3 CTE at 27, even though researchers had never seen that degree of the disease in anyone under 46. As fears of head trauma have ramped up in recent years, proposed legislation to end or restrict youth tackle football in five different states either stalled or failed outright. However, participation at the high school level has fallen from 1.11 million athletes in 2008 to 1.06 million by 2017, largely because of health concerns, according to a study in JAMA Pediatrics.
Furthermore, the number of 6 to 12 year olds playing flag football has increased by 38% to 1.5 million over the last three years, which is almost 100,000 more than those playing tackle football, according to a study by the Sports and Fitness Industry Association. As Allied World President of North American Casualty Joe Slower told ESPN, traumatic brain injury is an emerging latent exposure the likes of which the insurance industry has not seen in decades. Joe Slora, president of North American Casualty at Allied World, wrote in a blog post last year for the website Risk and Insurance. Slora declined to comment for this story. Alex Fairley, a risk manager whose clients include the NFL and Major League Baseball, told ESPN that if you're football, hockey, or soccer, the insurance business doesn't want you. Before the 2013 concussion settlement, the NFL had traumatic brain injury coverage from several insurance companies, according to ESPN. Several of those companies are now suing the NFL over claims related to the $1 billion settlement. And according to ESPN, the insurance market for amateur football was even larger than the NFL's, but it has since recoiled over fears that settlements will trickle in over decades and carriers could ultimately be responsible for billions in medical and legal costs. Even the upstart XFL, which is set to launch for a second time next year, has struggled to get proper coverage. Founder Vince McMahon and Commissioner Oliver Locke both recognized the issue is perhaps the biggest facing the fledgling league. It's an existential question, Locke told the SPN. Can I get adequate workers' compensation insurance? Can I get adequate general liability insurance? It's overlooked, but it's important. But beyond important, it's statutory. According to ESPN's research, only Berkeley Entertainment and Sports is offering to cover traumatic brain injuries for football leagues. I think being the last person standing, there is a lot of pressure put on us, company CEO Cindy Broskhart told Outside the Lines. Not only on ourselves, but we report up through two people, our CEO and our chairman. The NFL settlement, which took effect January 2017, resolved thousands of lawsuits that accused the NFL of hiding what it knew about the risks of repeated concussions. Recently the NFL dropped its challenge of approved dementia diagnosis claims. Several well-known former players have battled dementia before their deaths, including ex-Pittsburgh Steelers center Mike Webster, longtime offensive guard Ralph Wenzel, former Atlanta Falcons safety Ray Sterling, and former Cleveland Browns offensive lineman Jerry Sullivan. Easterling, like many other former players, committed suicide. Some other players who'd have been affected by concussions include former New Orleans Saints safety Steve Gleason, who now suffers from Lou Gehrig's disease, as well as former Dallas Cowboys running back Tony Dorsett and legendary Green Bay Packers quarterback Brett Favre. In 2018, Favre told the Daily Mail that he hopes to end youth tackle football in America. I think it's going to take someone who has poured his blood, sweat and tears into it. In 2016, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell was asked if, knowing what he has learned in recent years, would allow his son to play football. I would not only want him to play football, I would certainly encourage him to do it and I would let him do it, he said. About 2,000 claims have been filed in less than two years, 